Well, hello, thank you for joining me today again on the Church History Trail. And we're continuing looking at my books, and in particular, my antique books. And the first one up is the author J.H. Jowett. Now, here's what Warren Wearsby says concerning Jowett. He says that he's the greatest preacher in the English-speaking world. So certainly Wearsby had a very high opinion of Jowett. And the first book that, that I want to show you is The Preacher, His Life and Work. And this was possibly wrote in 1912. And it's this wee book here. The Preacher, His Life and Work. And you can see that you can make it out pretty well. Um, it's not bad condition, that wee book. It's pretty good condition. And so that's, that's that wee book. And then his next book... I want to uh, show you is The High Calling, which is 1910, which is this book here. Again, you can see The High Calling, and it's J.H. Jowett. And again, it's pretty good condition, Melrose. Very good condition, that wee book. And then the next book is Thirsting for Springs, uh, which is his third edition. And it was published sometime after 1902. And it's this wee book here. And so his books are in pretty good condition. As you can see. And then the next author is Charles Reynolds Brown. And he was a congregational minister. And he wrote These Twelve, which was printed in 1926. Which is this wee book here. And there you can see, again, pretty good condition that wee book. And then we have, next up is William McIntosh McKay, uh, Mackay, and he was uh, the minister of Sherbrooke Church in Glasgow. And his book is Days of the Son of Man, and it was published in October 1926. And it's this wee book here. As you can see, Days of the Son of Man. And again, another good condition. There's Hodder and Stockton. And a lot of the books are actually printed by Hodder and Stockton. But that's good condition, that wee book. So it is, as you can see. And then the next one up is A Brother and Man, which is John uh, Gifford Ballot. And he was one of the chief men among the Brethren movement. And he had actually a lifelong friendship with John Nelson Darby. And his book is The Minor Prophets. And it was printed sometime after 1879. And it's this wee book here. And so that was printed sometime after 1879. As you can see, The Minor Prophets. A wee bit scuffed at the side, but not too bad. Pretty good condition, that wee book. And then the next one up is F.B. Myers. And he was a Baptist pastor and an evangelist. And he, when he, he met D.L. Moody and the evangelist D.L. Moody, and they became lifelong friends after their meeting. And this book is called Joseph, and it's 1955. And it's this wee book here. And by the side of it, you would think it was older, but it's actually 1955. And that's that wee book there then by Mars. And then the next book is the New Testament. And it's not in great condition. <laughs> it's 1850. And so it's a right wee age, this one. As you can see, it's, it's showing his age. There's no doubt about it. And that one's 1850. It's great great to have these books, isn't it? You're looking at a bit of history. God's word, but yet you're also looking at a, at a, at a bit of history. And of course, of course, God's word is full of history, isn't it? Fantastic. And then, this is the oldest book that I have. And this book was actually printed on the 26th of June, 1837. And so this is the oldest book I have. And it's called The Protestant Preachers. Or the Protestant Preacher, and it's volume three, 
And I had to put a wee bit of sellotape around it, as you can see, to keep it together. But uh, that's the 1837. And basically what it is, it's it's a, a load of pro Protestant clergymen. And they've got their sermons in this book, so they have. And so it's called The Protestant Preacher. And so that's 1837, that wee book. And so it's, again, you're looking at a bit of history there. Fantastic. And then this wee book here is John Nelson Darby's translation of the Holy Bible. Now, Darby was one of the early founders of the Brethren movement. And he published a translation of the New Testament in 1867. And some of his students then produced an Old Testament translation on Darby's French and German translation after he, his death. And the complete Darby Bible then was first published in 1890. Now this one here is not 1890 <laughs> because this is 2003, this one, as you can see. But uh, this is the, the Darby translation of the, uh, a new translation, it says, of the Holy Bible. And so that's the, the what's known as the Darby Bible or the Darby translation. And there's one more book I want to show you. And it's this one here. And this is actually by Reverend J.A. Wiley. And it's called The History of Protestantism. And he's done the whole history of Protestantism. And this volume here it was printed in 1870. And so it's an amazing book. Now, when I open it here, you'll see that it's, it's very, uh, <laughs> it's nearly falling apart. So I have to be very careful. But I was given this book. You know, and so there's the cover. You can see the cover. It's Reverend J.A. Wiley. And it's illustrated throughout it. That's fantastic. And I'll show you some of the illustrations as we go along here. There you can see the history of Protestantism, Reverend J.A. Wiley. And uh, that's Luther before the dad at Worms. And I've actually been there. Uh, now the, the palace isn't there anymore. But... It's marked out actually where Luther was standing before Charles V. And so I've actually been to Worms. And so that's Luther before the dead. He, Luther there was standing before the most powerful man in, in Europe at that time. In the Holy Roman Empire. His Catholic Majesty King Charles V. And this one here is. This is actually Henry IV. And he's doing penance here. Because he's fallen out with the Pope. And uh, to get back in favour with the Pope, he has to do penance here, stand on his bare feet. But of course, penance is no good because penance might put him in, in a good relationship with the Pope. But it doesn't do anything towards God. Because it's through faith in Christ that we're saved, isn't it? And by the Lord's blood that he shed. And that's the only way we can get into heaven, through through Christ. And then here's another wee photo here, wee illustration. This is actually uh, John Wycliffe. And that's John Wycliffe was of the uh, 14th century. He was a reformer of the 14th century. And I've been to his church at Lotterworth as well. So we have, and then this one here is Francis of Assisi. And so that's an illustration there of Francis of Assisi. And then this one here, that's, that's the Lotterworth church. That's the one I have been to in England. That's Wycliffe's church. And then that's Wycliffe. And he's on trial there, as you can see. These illustrations are brilliant because it really gives you an idea of what it was like. And that's Wycliffe on trial. And then this one here is, that's the trial of Huss, John Huss. And he was a Bohemian reformer. And he was a century after Wyc Wycliffe. He was burnt in 1415 at the stake. And that's him at trial, on trial. And then this one here is of Martin Luther. Luther, of course, was an Augustinian priest. But he came to realise that salvation was by grace, God's grace alone through faith in Jesus. And no matter what Luther tried to do to earn God's favour, all he could see was an angry judge. 
And then he realized by reading Romans and Psalms that the righteousness of God is actually imputed to us and that we, it's our own righteousness is as filthy rags. And Luther says once he realized that, that through faith he was made righteous in the eyes of God, he says it was like the doors of, the gates of heaven had been flung open wide to him and he felt he had been born again of the Spirit of God. And then that's Luther there nailing his thesis, his 95 thesis to the uh, castle, to the door of the castle church at Wittenberg. And I've actually been there as well, so I have. And I've been in the castle church. I've actually been at Luther's grave as well. He's buried in the church, so he is. And the story goes as uh, when Charles V took the city of Worms, or the city of Wittenberg, sorry, after Luther's death, that someone says to his majesty, this is Luther's grave, the heretic's grave, as he called them. He says, will we dig him up and burn him? And Charles V turns around and says, I didn't come here to war to make war with dead men. <laughs> so I thought that was a good reply. And then there's the, that's Luther's house. That was an Augustinian monastery. And I've actually been in there as well. So I have, it's a great place. There's Erasmus, that's Desiderius Erasmus. And... He was a fantastic scholar. It was through Erasmus. He was a, a, a doctor of the church, the Roman Catholic Church. And he uh, he was a fantastic scholar. And he done the Greek New Testament. He, he, he uh, wrote it in Greek. And so those who could read Greek among the, the priests could uh, could read it. And many, peop many priests were reading this New Testament and were actually being converted. And they were saying that some of the practices that they were involved in with the church was actually not scriptural. And so they were converted through faith in Christ. And so it was Erasmus' New Testament that was one of the keys that unlocked the truth to the Bible. And also then the Reformation. And then there's Luther who is burning the, the Pope's papal bull. The bull which bonds Luther. And excommunicates Luther, and so Luther is burning it. And I've actually been at that spot too, where where he's actually burnt that. That's in Wittenberg. And let me see what else. There's Luther being whisked away. He's actually being being whisked away there by one of Duke Frederick's men, because this is just after the death of Worms, and he's he's in the forest, and the Duke actually, who's a friend of Luther's, um, has Luther whisked away into the Wittenberg Castle for uh, uh, safety, oh, not Wittenberg, sorry, um, it's the, oh, I forget the name of the castle, I forget the name of the castle, but anyway, he has him, he has him whisked away there, and uh, it's for his own good, and I've actually been in that castle as well, so I have, and uh, of course Luther was in hiding for many months there, but while he, while he was there, he actually, uh, Oh, so Castle of the Wartburg, that's the name of it. The names came to me there, the Castle of the Wartburg. But while he was hiding there in the castle, he actually translated the New Testament, the Greek New Testament, Erasmus' New Testament into German. And so he made use of his time in hiding. That's Aldrich Swingley. He was one of the Swiss reformers. He was an early uh, Swiss reformer. And he actually was killed in battle. So he was, Swingley was actually killed in battle. He was chaplain and he was killed in battle, so he was. And so there you are. That's, I've took you through a right wee bit there of the uh, history of the Reformation. And so thanks for uh, joining me today. And if you like the channel, please like and subscribe. God bless.